Carol Austin is the new defensive coordinator, and this is a surprise to exactly 0.00% of the nation. However, it might surprise some to know that this is one of those good internal hires. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It's delivered to your cyber doorstep every weekday morning, bright and early. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. The New York Giants came calling, sought permission to interview Austin. This was over the weekend. And whatever song and dance the Steelers brass was going through to interview other candidates, bring in other people, uh, even though everyone had known, and in fact, the predecessor himself, Keith Butler, had spoken publicly that the job was going to Austin, the Steelers got off their gimmick, and wrapped up the process on a Sunday, no less. Which tells you that they felt a little bit of additional urgency through the Giants' action. The last thing they wanted was to have known all along that this was their guy and then have him swept out from underneath them. So they got their guy, and you know what? Good for them. Good for them. I'm going to sound to some as if I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth when I say this, but I don't have any problem with this internal hire. I don't have a problem conceptually with internal hires. I have a problem with lazy, comma, uninspired, comma, failed internal hires, such as the circus that we've witnessed over the last couple of years in the offensive line room, or for that matter, the recent promotion of Matt Canada from quarterbacks coach to offensive coordinator, even though he had no qualifications to do that at the NFL level, and even though everything about his background, in fact, pointed toward this being a disaster with the quarterback that he had. Furthermore, I have a problem with lazy, uninspired, failed internal hires that are made specifically and most pointedly for the purpose of allowing the head coach to retain an iron grip on every conceivable micromanagement component that he can. And I'll hold true to that through this hire through the promotion of Austin, in the sense that it would be nice to have a defensive coordinator who's free to defensively coordinate. I don't believe that'll happen. I don't even believe that Tomlin will acknowledge at any point that he will or won't be hands-off when it comes to calling defensive signals. He's going to give us one of those standard lines that he always does about, I don't need to pull back the curtain for you guys. And that makes me a little leery of this. But in the same breath, I can also say that whoever they were going to hire from the outside was going to be stuck with this circumstance. And I don't have to guess at that because Art Rooney essentially said as much. So within these parameters, yeah, I'll take Terrell Austin. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online. Maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. Austin's got himself a real live NFL resume. This is not... Matt Canada. Austin's been a defensive coordinator both in Detroit and in Cincinnati, and in the former, of all places, he had actual success. No one, no one succeeds with the Lions, but he did, including defensively. 
And in another world where the Rooney rule were more than just words on paper or a theory, he might have gotten an NFL head coaching job out of it. I believe that. As it is, even when the Bengals dumped him in midseason, the Steelers were right there to swoop him up. And if you recall, and I definitely do, this fan base was very much behind the acquisition of Austin at the time. He was going to come in just as a defensive assistant, work with the secondary and other components, but it was pretty clear to everyone that he was brought in for the purpose of succeeding Butler at coordinator. And no one anywhere, to my knowledge, had an issue with that. And let's bear in mind that this was an outside hire, the ultimate outside hire actually coming from a division rival in the middle of the season, and that he was brought in transparently to fulfill what happened yesterday. That was why he was acquired. But I got to tell you, it's not any of that that's had me sold on Austin for a while. I've been in favor of Austin getting this job for a while. And the number one reason is that he just did a hell of a job with what his actual job was. He was the coach of this secondary. And if you go across these guys individually, or collectively for that matter, and assess how they performed, tell me where Austin didn't succeed as a coach, as best as we can tell on the outside to whatever degree a coach contributes. Remember when everyone wanted to run Terrell Edmonds out of town? Remember that? How are you feeling about T.E. now? You just want to re-sign him, right? This is a pretty good football player. It's a pretty good NFL safety who was asked to do some things this year that most teams don't ask of their safety. He was basically performing as an emergency linebacker because the actual inside linebackers that the Steelers were employing couldn't tackle to save their lives. T.E. really blossomed right in front of our eyes. T.E. himself, the one member of that secondary that I feel like I've formed the most honest relationship with, by the way, will swear by Coach Austin. That means something to me. That means something to me. Minka Fitzpatrick came from a situation in Miami where he was being used in a way he didn't want to be used. That's why he asked out. Came here, had immediate success, fell on some hard times. It was Coach Austin who kept his head screwed on properly. Not guessing at this. This came right out of Minka's mouth. And Minka ended up becoming, you saw it. You saw it. Dude's going to get paid this summer. And he's going to owe a significant chunk of that cash to Coach Austin. Corners are a little bit of a different world. But it was Austin's ability to teach and instruct that helped convince Mike Tomlin and staff that they could use Cam Sutton both inside and outside at corner. And you know what? They did. I don't know that Sutton was a star, but I do know that Sutton never stopped being asked to do both, bouncing inside and outside. Want another good example? Remember back in training camp whenever the Steelers were seemingly having like off-the-street tryouts to replace Mike Hilton at nickel corner? And it was going to be, you know, Antoine Brooks, whoever. And it ended up being Arthur Millette. None of us were excited about Millette. Uh, he didn't exactly stand out at camp or in preseason, not even early in the regular season. What did you think of Millette by season's end? That tells me a guy can coach. That tells me a guy can coach. When you see a player get better right in front of your eyes over the course of a season, that tells me someone can coach. The exact same thing that I was ripping Adrian Clem, the offensive line coach, for, the opposite of that applies to Austin. Does that mean he'll make a great coordinator? Does that mean Tomlin will give him the reins to become that? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I do know that under these various scenarios that surround this, 
this was the best hire and the Steelers did well to get him. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question, and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG pride themselves in doing what they say they're going to do. It's important to them that when they make you a promise, they keep that promise. And this law firm has been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them at lgkg.com. And today's J1Q comes from Doug, who asks, Can you possibly explain how the assistant offensive line coach wasn't the actual offensive line coach, since the actual offensive line coach was terrible and was job hunting during the season, and the assistant was just hired by another NFL team, which makes the Steelers coaching slash hiring practices seem even more bizarre. Way to load that one up, Doug. Let's start uh let's start naming names here. Adrian Clem, who I referenced in the opening segment, began the season as the offensive line coach promoted from assistant. And he was clearly way, way, way in over his head. And you don't have to ask me that. You can just go ahead and ask Adrian Clem that, since he was the one who decided voluntarily to take a demotion to college football, which is, you know, going from the major leagues to the minors in a lateral move. You don't have to wonder what he thinks himself of his own abilities to coach in the NFL, he ducked out, and he ducked out in midstream. So, to what you're saying, Chris Morgan is the one who was Clem's assistant, who was promoted late in the season when Mike Tomlin decided he didn't want a lame duck guy being around for the final couple of weeks, and Tomlin went overboard in praising Morgan. Just, wow, what a difference. This is spectacular having this guy. Those weren't the exact words. It was pretty much that, though. Okay. And whether or not Morgan made some big difference or not, the Steelers did look a little bit better, but to me, they looked a little bit better just because they got Kendrick Green out of there and used J.C. Hasnauer at center. They had someone playing center who could actually play center. That helped. But to your point, yeah. It's, it's mystifying the way they've handled the offensive line room over the last couple of years is mystifying. This is a positional group that for a decade had been handled in a first-class way. Not just the players. That's the easy part. It's not the easy part, but it's the, it's the most visible part. When you have Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro and Ramon Foster and Alejandro Villanueva and Marcus Gilbert and other guys, yes, that's going to be an easier group to coach and to unify than all of this nonsense that the Steelers cobbled together for the 2021 season. Of course it is. That said, those guys, those guys, the Marquises and so forth, will swear by what Mike Munchak did. For them, individually and collectively, I can tell you from watching Coach Munch with these offensive linemen in Latrobe and beyond and into the season, he never stopped teaching. He never stopped pulling aside individuals, including Marquise, after all of Marquise's all-pro honors, and saying, hang on, try this. Nope, stop, do this. Let's work on this new thing over here. They just kept getting better. Why this positional group, all of a sudden, with the same people, Tomlin, Kevin Colbert, etc., became an afterthought? I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. For this owner to stand there last January 
and say this is going to be all about the running game. Everything's about the running game. And then a week before the draft, Mike Tomlin stands before us and says, it's not just about getting a running back. It's about the whole thing. Whenever we were all thinking Najee Harris is coming. And then they do nothing. They do nothing. They do nothing at the player level, and they did nothing at the coaching level. You can't change all the players. You can't go and get yourself five new offensive linemen in a single offseason and make everything okay. But you sure can coach them up. And I'm going to do this until he's working somewhere else. But it strikes me as nuts, like beyond nuts, that this team wouldn't go to Mike Munchak right now and just hand him a blank checkbook. There's no salary cap on what you pay coaches, but the Steelers tend to have some of the lowest coach pay in the league. That's not a great reflection on ownership. It's just not. And if you pay someone like Munchak more than, say, whatever it is that you're paying Matt Canada, great, great. Who's Matt Canada? What's he achieved in the league? Right? Guy's been around. Munchak has. He was an exemplary Hall of Fame player. He's proven himself as a coach, as an instructor. Give him whatever title it is that he need to come back here. Call him assistant head coach, assistant coordinator. Call him Grand Poobah. Get him back here. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We will do another one tomorrow.